Jigsaw Puzzle Championships 2023. The World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships are the Olympics of puzzling. The fastest speed puzzlers from all over the world all compete against each other, and this year, I was there. Here's how it works. There are three categories of competition, individual, pairs, and teams. In each round, everybody is given the same puzzle in an opaque bag, so you don't know what it is ahead of time. Then, when they say go, you open up the puzzle, and whoever solves it first is the winner. So the competition was sponsored by Ravensburger, and this video is also sponsored by Ravensburger. The competition happens on the other side of the world in Valladolid, Spain. So they covered my travel out there and they also covered my camera person, Valentina. So a huge thank you to Ravensburger for making this video happen. So here is what the schedule looked like. We're going to start with day one, where there were six individual quarterfinal rounds. In these rounds, you have 90 minutes to complete a 500 piece puzzle. And make sure you watch at least through quarterfinal D. That one is crazy. <laughs> So we're going to do the countdown to the begin, the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship 2023 in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Good luck to you all. So in the first round of competition, we have Kristen, who you may remember got second place last year. The entire internet was obsessed with her one-handed puzzling technique, but this year she's debuting a new two-handed technique. Very interesting. And here is a look at the very first puzzle of the competition. Oh my gosh, okay, it just started. I'm literally backstage. Um, so the picture looks like it is a nature edition 500 piece. And now I'm like, that one that I saw at the puzzle stores, what if that's the one that I get and I could have practiced it and I didn't, oh no. <laughs> so here's a better look at the puzzle. Uh, this is a very difficult one to start off with. So five minutes in, we can see Kristen doing a lot of sorting up front. And then she decided to start right in the middle with the brightest part of the sky. Meanwhile, my pair's partner, Evie, was working on the sky edge. A slightly different strategy there. At 12 minutes in, you can see how Mercedes from Hungary and Delia from the Netherlands are both working on that bright sky. And then here's Kristen's progress about a minute later. But okay, this competition started off with a little bit of a hiccup. If we jump ahead to 16 minutes, you can see the first sign that something is not quite right for Kristen. You can see her looking under the box, looking on the floor, and that's because she had five missing pieces in the sky. So after doing a quick search, I'm sure she's a little rattled, but she kept her composure and she started working on the flowers. Now, these flowers are definitely way more difficult than the sky. At 35 minutes, even the top puzzlers are struggling. And at 
at just under 45 minutes, we have our first winner, Mercedes from Hungary. That is an amazing time for such a difficult puzzle. So three minutes later, Kristen finishes for second, and we need to talk about this for a minute because you can see that there are still five pieces missing from her puzzle. Now, when they went around initially collecting all the bags, you can see this volunteer checking the bag. It would have been obvious if there were still five puzzle pieces in there. They also went through all of the bags backstage, but they didn't find any stowaway pieces. Plus, since four of the pieces are all right next to each other, what are the chances that it's those four that somehow went missing during the competition? Like, they have to have been missing from the start. So the official rules say that for every missing piece, you get 10 seconds added to your time. So even though Kristen finished at 47.50, her official recorded time is 48.40. Luckily, this change did not affect the rankings. She was still solidly in second place. However, she did spend extra time looking for the missing pieces. So it's just a really unfortunate situation. Now, I have been in touch with the organizers of the event and they are taking this very seriously. They are actively working on solutions so that this doesn't happen again, like um, maybe weighing all of the puzzle bags beforehand on a precision scale so that they can know ahead of time if any pieces are gonna be missing. But luckily we got it out of the way early. I think this was the biggest issue that happened all weekend. Anyway, 90 seconds later, Delia from the Netherlands finishes for third. My teammate Michaela got ninth place and my other teammate EB got 13th. So let's take a look at the stats. Here is the top 15. And you can see that only nine people finished in under an hour. And out of 93 competitors, only 34 people finished in that 90 minute time limit. Oh my God, this is it. My first ever, my first ever. Um, World Jigsaw Puzzle Championship. What if I don't know how to do puzzles? What if I've been lying to myself this whole time? Cuatro, tres, dos, uno, adelante, fuerte. Oh, no way. Oh my God, it's the New York one. The, the, we did the London one last year. I loved this puzzle. I loved this puzzle. Oh, I loved the other version, but you know what I mean. Okay, all the pieces. Oh my God. This is way better than round one. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking and distracting everyone who's around me and focus on this puzzle. This is it. Uh, my hands are shaking so bad. Okay, so this was my quarterfinal round. My first time competing at the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. And this is the puzzle we got. Now, if this looks familiar, that's because they used the London version of this puzzle at Worlds last year. And so I did that puzzle in a video. It took me 47.56 and I would have gotten 11th place, but I never practiced the New York version because I just assumed they wouldn't use such a similar puzzle to the previous year. Um, my bad. <laughs> I did hear that a lot of my competition had done this puzzle before, so I was definitely at a little bit of a disadvantage there. But the thing about this puzzle is that 
it isn't very hard. There is a lot of color separation and bright distinct textures. And so that means there is no room for error. It means that the times are going to be much, much closer than the first round. So who was I up against? Well, Yvonne was in this round. Katrina is the Australian national champion. Teresa got third place last year, so that's intimidating. So for my strategy, um, I just started by flipping and sorting out edges, which took me exactly three minutes. Then it took me until seven minutes to get most of the edge done. Then I went back in looking for distinct textures and colors that I recognized from the edges and I made a whole bunch of little piles. So at 11 minutes in, here is my progress while Teresa has already finished this entire red section. Oh, and just look at this interesting strategy. Jean Reuter just has floating sections of color that she's gonna have to connect later. So at about 25 minutes in, Yvonne and I look pretty similar to each other. Um, we're both working in from the edges, but look at where Teresa is. That is incredible. She is almost done. Teresa easily wins this match with a time of 30.38. Look at where I am at the same time. That is wild. She is so fast. So after I heard those first cheers, I will admit it kind of it took a little bit of the pressure off. Someone else had already won, so you don't have those is someone else like just about to finish jitters? But it was around this time where I suddenly just got like super tired. I guess it was the stress and the nerves and the adrenaline and the travel catching up to me. But honestly, if I was doing this just at home as a practice puzzle and I was feeling that way, I might have just stopped. But this is the World Championships. It is a true marathon for your brain. I pushed and pushed myself to keep going and keep up the pace. And I'm really proud of myself for sticking through and finishing it. So at 38-18, Kelly Walter finished for second. And 22 seconds after that, Andrea Peng finished for third. A minute later, Katrina finished for fourth. But I was still plugging away at the last little bit of my puzzle. And I was definitely getting more and more discouraged every time I heard another cheer. Oh my gosh. Okay, 4228. I heard a lot of people cheer. Oh, that's me up on the live stream. <laughs> I heard a lot of people cheering. I have no idea what place I got. That's pretty good though, 42. It's pretty good. Okay, okay, we're good. Um, oh my God, I loved that puzzle. I'm so happy I got that puzzle and not the first puzzle. Oh, Yvonne finished. Did she beat me? Well, the first one, okay, the first time people started cheering and took all the pressure off. And then as more and more people finished, I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> oh, 
broke it. I already broke it. What do you think? That was great. You came in 10? I did. I don't actually know what my placement was yet. I was trying to count. It was around 10. This oh, wait. is A. This is A, so B. No, oh, that's this. C. There we go. All right, where was I? 11. 11. Okay, I got 11th place. Yay! Well, I qualified for the next round, so that's good. <laughs> Not quite 10th. Yvonne was a minute and 10 seconds faster than me. <laughs> okay, Teresa was at 30, 38. That's crazy. And then the next person was eight minutes later. That's wild. Well, that was successful. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So, exactly like my video last year, I got 11th place. I admit I had been secretly hoping to crack the top 10 just for the quarterfinal, but I made it through to the semifinals and that is the most important thing. So here's the top 15. Teresa is off completely in a world of her own. She was a full eight minutes ahead of second place. And then second through 15th place all happened within six minutes and 12 seconds of each other. So I really can't feel too bad about 11th because we were all right on top of each other. So 76 out of 96 contestants finished this puzzle and 37 finished in under an hour. That is more people than finished the first puzzle in the entire hour and a half. <laughs> Okay, so now I could relax a little because I was done for the day. For quarterfinal C, I actually hopped into the commentator's booth. So if you wanna hear all of my thoughts in real time, um, I'm gonna have the live stream linked right down below. Cuatro, Four, tres, three, dos, two, uno. one, puzzle! So here is the puzzle for this round. Uh, not as easy as the last puzzle, but not as hard as the first one. The gradient overlay means that there is a color separation, but it's a busy image with a lot going on. So Kiara is in this round. She got fourth place last year. We also have Anna from Spain and the other Anna from Spain, uh, they team up for pairs that they call themselves the Annas. Uh, and also Tiffany, who I just met at the Connecticut competition and she is super fast. So let's jump ahead to 15 minutes and peek in at what everyone's strategies are. Anna has the edge done and has done a lot of color sorting. Meanwhile, Kiara started over on the purple side and she has more done in the middle. So at 35 minutes, people are really heading into the home stretch. You can see Anna, Kiara, and Tiffany, and all of their puzzles look really solid. But it is Anna who really flew through this puzzle. She finished at 40.46. Two minutes later, Kiara finishes for second place. And then three minutes after that, it was Tiffany who, oh no, she had a piece on the floor. Oh my gosh, that is so stressful. And then 18 seconds later, Hannah from Australia also had a piece on the floor. So here are the results, and I think it was a pretty even race. I'd say this was a solidly medium difficulty puzzle for a competition. 
Oh my gosh, okay. Quarterfinal D is legendary. This was the most exciting match of the day. In Cinco, five, cuatro, four, tres, three, dos, two, one. uno, adelante, Paso, suerte. Good luck, good luck to you all. Buena suerte. Okay, so, so many people were in this round. Obviously, Alejandro, the winner from last year's championship. Right next to him is Tammy. And right behind him is my teammate, Sarah Schuler. And also, my sister Katie is in this round. I was so happy that she could come with me to the competition. So, can we just look at how fast Alejandro's hands are moving? It looks like the video is sped up, but this is real time. So here's the puzzle they were given, a pretty solid illustration with a lot of different textures going on. Okay, so literally within four and a half minutes, Alejandro has everything flipped over, the edges separated, and the blue car finished. Then he's moving on to the blue sky, uh, that's definitely the color that pops out the most. And I was literally just standing in front of Alejandro for most of this match, just like watching him puzzle. There's no trickery here. Like he's literally just super, super fast, both in how fast his hands move and also in how fast his brain is working to identify which piece has to go where. It is truly incredible to watch. So obviously Alejandro is doing incredibly well, but wait, who's that? Is somebody neck and neck with Alejandro? This is Kati from Germany. She's only 19. This is her first competition and she's giving Alejandro a run for his money. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. So she only has the foliage left. He only has the tower left. They're working on different parts, so it's hard to tell who's really ahead, but this is neck and freaking neck. my gosh, incredible. Kati was only 16 seconds behind Alejandro. That is so incredible. She is the breakout puzzling star of the weekend. So after all of that excitement, um, 
A lot of really fast puzzlers are still going, but it is a full 11 minutes later that Tammy finishes for third. And then four minutes after that, Sarah finishes for fourth. That was so hard. Well, I mean, I'm shaking. <laughs> like hardcore. Alejandro being like within looking distance if I wanted to look at him which I did not, and I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> um, it was stressful. <laughs> and then a little while later, I just want to give a shout out to my new friend, Fernando, who wins the Finishing in Style Award. <laughs> and then I also went to check on Katie. At about an hour 10, she was in the home stretch. So here is the top 15. You can just see those huge jumps right at the beginning. And Tammy is also pretty far ahead. After that, it kind of evens out and everybody finishes pretty regularly. But Kati proved that she is one to watch. So a couple fun facts about Kati. I've been following her on Instagram for a few months now, since some of my friends over the summer we're talking about this girl in Germany who was posting super fast times onto Instagram. And when I went to check her out, her profile picture is her with my puzzle. And then when I went to go talk to her the next day, um, just listen to this. What got you into speed puzzling? Actually, your video about Wait, last year. Wait, no way, yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I puzzled for all my life. I didn't know about speed puzzling. Yeah. And then oh. I saw your video about yeah. worlds and I was like, wait, there's a world championship about <laughs> speed puzzling. And then I bought the final puzzle from last year and then I compared my time and then I decided to sign up. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> also, not only had she done that puzzle before, but she did it checkerboard matched with another Ravensburger puzzle. That is crazy difficult. I am just so impressed. All right, so at this point, it was 6.30 p.m. Valentina and I had been at the Dome since 9 a.m. So even though there were still two rounds to go, we were so tired. Um, we decided to head back to the hotel. And so I only have live stream footage for these last two rounds. Also, Alejandro was on this live stream, but on the Spanish one. So I don't speak Spanish. I don't know what he was saying. But if anyone wants to watch and report back, uh, let us all know in a comment. Three. Three. Two, one, one and Adelante, suerte. Good luck to all of you. So here is the puzzle for group E. Fairly challenging in the sky and those pink flowers. I didn't have any super close friends in this match. So let's just jump ahead into the middle. Uh, Laura from Spain is moving along quickly. Mary has been competing since the 80s and she is still super fast. Brigida from Hungary got seventh place last year, so she's definitely one to watch. And Marketa from the Czech Republic is also moving along very quickly. Uh, 
Okay, so at 40 minutes, pretty much all of the top puzzlers just have that white sky and the pink flowers left. You can see Marquetta doing some shape sorting for all of those white pieces. <laughs> So Laura finishes for first, 20 seconds later, Brigida gets second, and 47 seconds after that, Marquetta gets third after, oh no, she left a piece in the puzzle bag. <laughs> she can't get it out. <laughs> So one interesting thing that I saw with this puzzle is some people putting the white pieces onto the puzzle itself so that they could see the shapes better than on the white poster board. Uh, this guy came prepared though. A black tray is exactly what you need here. So here are the results of this one. Nothing too crazy, except that in this full chart, you can see some different stair steps of people who all finished right around the same time. And finally, it is the last individual quarterfinal and the last event of the day. Three, two, one. Adelante, Paso. suerte. Adelante. Good luck to you all. So this one didn't actually start until 9 p.m. and it went to 10.30 p.m. So you can see how they lost the daylight and now have to puzzle under artificial light. And the puzzle for this round was a bit of a surprise. It's a panoramic puzzle. I don't think anyone knew that those were even on the table as an option. It's another nature scene, and I actually don't think it's as hard as it looks because you have a pretty strong gradient in the sky, and then the grass is only a couple rows of pieces. But if you've never done a Ravensburger panoramic puzzle, you won't know exactly how wide or how tall the puzzle is going to be, which will definitely make it trickier. So some people are jumping right into that edge. Some people are doing a lot more color sorting. Uh, Soraya is a very fast Spanish puzzler, and you can see how she has that bright corner finished first thing. In fact, there were three people in a row on the live stream who didn't do the full edge, they just worked out from that one corner. In this round, we also have Gisela, who got fifth place last year, and she is Alejandro's Paris partner. So if we keep jumping through, you can see how for the first 30 minutes, everybody is just working on that sky. At 38 minutes, Gisela and Soraya are both moving onto the grass. You can see how Gisela is doing the edge pieces while Soraya is filling in the inside pieces. Two different strategies, but they both work. Soraya gets first at just under 50 minutes. Jacqueline, also from Spain, is about three minutes after her. Three minutes after that is Vonda from Hungary. And then 45 seconds after her, Gisela finishes for fourth. So here are those times, um, again, very evenly spaced. Nothing too wild going on, but only five people finished in under an hour. So it was definitely on the higher difficulty side. So that was day one of the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. A big congratulations to our first six winners. So let's take a look at some comparison stats. These are the top 50 times across all of the rounds, 
And you can see that round B was definitely the easiest puzzle. The fastest solve was by Teresa on that puzzle at 3038. Then Alejandro and Kati. And then it's a pretty big jump up to the next people. And just for fun, this one is me. I had the 15th fastest time of the day. Although I know it doesn't really mean anything because we were all doing different puzzles. So then if we look at how many people finished and didn't finish, you can really see the order of difficulty here. Now let's talk about who qualifies for the semifinal rounds. So the six quarterfinals are feeding into two semifinals. There were anywhere between 92 to 99 people in each round. And from those, 60 people make it to the semifinals. But it is not just the fastest 60 puzzlers by time. It is the fastest puzzler from each country up to 30 countries. And then it's also the top 30 puzzlers by time. So if we look at quarterfinal D, which Katie was in, there were 31 different countries represented. So these are the top puzzlers from each country, and the bright green is countries with only one contestant. So since it's only the top 30 countries, this last contestant does not qualify. Then we add the top 30 times, no matter what country they're from, and that is everybody who moves on to the next round. So since Katie got 51st place, she was the first person who did not qualify because there were still 10 unique countries after her, even though nine of those people did not finish the puzzle and she did. Now, when we're moving from the semifinals to the finals, you do have to finish the puzzle for that country rule to apply. But that was not the case for the quarterfinals into the semifinals. And I don't know, I would just like to say, as thankful as I am for like the organizers of this event and for this event to exist at all, I just don't really like this rule. I mean, I get where they're coming from, where people from smaller countries probably have fewer opportunities to participate in a puzzle contest, and the top fastest people are going to get through either way. But I just don't really like that the smaller countries get a handicap and the bigger countries are at a disadvantage. And I'm not saying this just because of Katie, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. Um, this was a big topic of debate all weekend long. But that is only one small part of this competition. Above everything else, it is all about the community. It was so amazing to get to meet all of the international puzzlers after spending so much time editing the recap videos about them last year. I was actually talking to Kiara for a while, and she told me that she also got a 9,000 piece puzzle for her 18th birthday. She grew up in Italy, I grew up in New Jersey, but we are the same person. And of course, getting to meet Alejandro and Kristen, they are both the most humble people in the world. And getting to share this with my sister Katie was so special. So I think that is plenty for one video. So I'm going to end it here. And in my next video, I'm going to be covering all of the semi-final rounds. And then in my video after that, I'll cover all of the finals and we will find out who won the World Jigsaw Puzzle Championships. So I want to give a huge thank you to Ravensburger for sponsoring me to go to Worlds 
and for sponsoring this video and for letting me bring Valentina. She got so much incredible footage. Like she was working harder than literally any of us. <laughs> so if you want to try any of the puzzles, I'm going to have them all linked right down below. And I'm also going to link the full live streams, both the English ones and the Spanish ones. So if you were there, please leave a comment letting us all know what it was like from your perspective. And to everyone else, uh, let me know if you have any questions that you want me to answer in the next video. Your code word for the comments will be postcard. So here's a little taste of what's coming up next. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it.